Today on Christian World News, a celebration 20 years in the making. See how obedience to God's call produced hundreds of missionaries in 60 countries around the world. Plus, they called him the Billy Graham of Egypt, remembering the life of a beloved pastor and influential Christian in the heart of the Middle East. And evidence for the truth of the Bible, an amazing discovery proves the existence of a biblical king. Hello everyone, welcome to this week's edition of Christian World News. I'm George Thomas. And I'm Wendy Griffith. Well, many of you know Gordon Robertson as the host of the 700 Club and CEO of the Christian Broadcasting Network. Well, 20 years ago, a vision from God showed Gordon multitudes of Filipino Christians going to the ends of the earth as missionaries. Yeah, incredible. He took that dream and moved his family to the Philippines and started the Asian Center for Missions. Recently, Gordon returned there to honor those who answered that call. The year was 1995. Here, in a refugee camp along the Thai-Burmese border, CBN's Gordon Robertson and a dozen Filipino missionaries were bringing the gospel to displaced okay. refugees. And I want you to ask God, what should I pray for with his family? Okay. Okay, so God can reveal something about his family, mm -hmm. something right now. Yes. Not in the future, but a prayer need right now. Talk about that experience back in 1995, going to Thailand. What was it like being there? <laughs> uh, that trip was uh, pretty incredible. I have a message for you today. Robertson says the trip and that year in his life, because I sense that you're troubled, that you feel that proved you're... to be significant. I want to impart a vision to you today of how God wants to use your present distress for the glory of his kingdom. While he and the Filipino missionaries came to bring hope, we ask your mercy for this woman, O oh Lord. Restore the muscle in her right leg. And comfort to refugees. Robertson says it also served as another divine confirmation of the role the Philippines would play in world evangelism. His call, well, which was very clearly issued in the 1990s in the Philippines, and I wasn't the only one who was saying this is the call, this is a nationwide call. You will be the greatest missionary nation ever. The Asian Center for Missions was birthed 20 years ago when Gordon said he received a vision from God of boatloads of Filipino missionaries going from this country to the ends of the earth. And I think the Filipino people have been uniquely crafted by him to be the vessels for carrying his love, his reconciliation around the world. Convinced of God's desire, Robertson moved his family to Manila and started training Filipinos for the mission field. A Filipino can fit in anywhere, right? They can go anywhere and fit in and blend in and be uh, productive in the culture, productive in society. And with those, they have a unique gifting to be able to carry the message of God's love. Since its beginning, the Asian Center for Missions has trained 1,700 missionaries, including 865, now serving in 60 countries around the world. I am amazed. Amazed at what God can do when you put yourself in His hands. Honduran missionary Dr. Miguel Alvarez met Robertson in 1994, and together they co-founded ACM a year later. The Bible is clear that the person who wins souls is a wise man. I want to be counted as one of those wise people. Robertson calls the Philippines his second home. Hallelujah. It is good to be home, isn't it? <laughs> and wants to see more answer the call to go and make disciples of Christ. My goal is to teach them as much as I can, all that I can, and then release them to go out and achieve what God wants them to do. To do. That is fruit that lasts, that remains, 
that I'll rejoice over in heaven. Danny Bayesen says because of Robertson's obedience to start ACM, I became a missionary to answer God's call to the nations. 17 years ago, Bayesen moved his family from the Philippines to serve in the Muslim-majority African nation of Burkina Faso. Since then, he's helped plant 10 churches, and in the last five years, his ministry has focused on so-called unreached people groups. He describes the results as astonishing. For many pastors who are formerly Muslims, they have testified that they have dreamt of seeing Jesus in their, in their dreams, and that's how they became um, believers. Are you living your dream? Yes. By God's grace. Jalard Isabel pastored a small church in 1995. Then one weekend, he heard Robertson give a message that changed his life forever. Went to the mission field with this big God, big, big God, who has passion and heart for the lost souls. On a recent weekend, Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the entrance of nations. Lardisabal and Bayesan joined hundreds for the 20th anniversary of the Asian Center for Missions. It's sort of at a loss for words, uh, both the miracle of its birth in the first place and then the miracle of how God sustained it uh, through the early years and how, how he still sustains it today. Brothers and sisters in God's kingdom, presenting the nations of the world. 20 years later, over 600 missionaries in the field. This is just the beginning, right? Uh, I still think we're at the beginning of it. My dream is for every overseas Filipino to get charged with, I can be a missionary. When that happens, that when, that's when that dream comes true. You know, 600 may be a small cruise ship. <laughs> so I, I saw boatloads. And so I'm holding on to that promise. And we're just at the beginning stages of it. Well, our friend and colleague Lucille Toulousin is our Asia correspondent. She works out of our CBN Manila office, and she's here with us right now in our Virginia Beach office to, to talk more about the influence of the Asia Center for Missions and her work with CBN News. And Lucille, you and I have certainly had some great God adventures in the Philippines, and it's so exciting. But I want to ask you, yes. you know, you've seen firsthand the impact of these Filipino missionaries uh, yes. worldwide. Tell us about that. Yeah, because they are my guide wherever CBN News sends me, um, in Myanmar, in Thailand, wherever. And I've seen how these um, ACM missionaries have been educating children. For example, in uh, Thailand, they've been educating children, the orphaned refugees from Myanmar. Well, let me ask you this yes. real quick. Why do you, you know, Gordon said that the Filipinos are uniquely crafted to take the gospel throughout Asia. Why are they so accepted? Well, we can blend. In any nation, like when I'm in Thailand, they speak to me in Thai. When I'm in Indonesia, they speak to me in Bahasa. Mm. And let me tell you, there was one time we were shooting this um, story about the Muslim extremists. And this uh, one guy was already coming to us and I just pretended to sleep. Oh. so that he will not talk to me because when I don't open my mouth, then he will think that I am also Indonesian. So that's one thing. We are, God has crafted us uniquely. Um, we are very caring people. Mm. We ha you have the best caregivers. You know, Filipinos, I think, are the best caregivers. The hospitality <laughs> is amazing. You guys we actually are, roasted a pig we when very I came there. Yeah, <laughs> it was amazing. they roasted a whole pig for Wendy <laughs> in the Philippines. Amazing. In southern Philippines, where the Abu Sayyaf Great are. Great hospitality. Yeah, but and we are very resilient people. That I've seen firsthand. Well, tell me about some of the obstacles, the harsh obstacles that Filipino missionaries mm -hmm. encounter and have to face. Okay, for example, um, uh, I, I know of two missionaries, um, women, who get death threats because um, they want to educate the children. And like in Thailand, their parents want them to be prostitutes. But then, you know, they, they, these missionaries, they get them to live in the houses, in the homes, to educate them. 
and so they get death threats. Yeah, but and because you've of certainly prayer, had a lot of death threats. And I mean, um, yeah, well, some. it's the anointing of the Lord. So yeah, yeah, well, and uh, yeah, and I, I'm really very proud being a Filipino. We have this glorious, this um, wonderful calling. Uh, Philippines is named after King Philip and also Philip the Evangelist. And we have this calling to spread the gospel to the nations. So the Filipinos are there in the nations, in the jail, in the, uh, in the fields, and to help bring about the glorious destiny of these nations. That is amazing. Well, we're so proud of you and everything you're doing and Thank your you, contribution Wendy. to uh, CBN and Thank Christian you. World Thank News. You. And great to have you here. Thank you very much. Okay, well, up next, for 60 years, he spread the gospel in the largest Muslim country in the Middle East. We remember a hero of the faith. I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. Eight years ago, my husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. Inside every child is a hero, a leader, a friend to others someone who helps out, who does the right thing, who dreams of what they can be, but they still need our help. What should I do? What should I say? How should I feel? That's where Superbook comes in. It provides moral and spiritual truths through situations children can relate to, teaching God's Word to the children you love. Join the Superbook DVD Club and receive Superbook's newest episodes as they're available, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. Get Superbook today and watch the miracles happen. And welcome back to Christian World News. The world lost many known celebrities, well-known celebrities in 2015. Perhaps less recognized was the passing of a man known as the Billy Graham of Egypt. That's right. Menez Abdul Noor pastored the largest evangelical church in the Middle East. Gary Lane met recently with his family and brings us this look at how God used the evangelists to spread the gospel in the land of the ancient pharaohs. Unknown by many Americans, Pastor Manis Abdul Noor was a giant of the faith, not only in Egypt, but throughout the Middle East. He was a fearless Christian who, despite fierce opposition, introduced hundreds of thousands of Muslims and others to Christ. Last September, he died from Parkinson's disease at the age of 85. Five days after his passing, I was invited into Pastor Noor's home to meet with his son Fareed, daughter Violet, and his widow Nadia. I wanted to share my condolences and also hear about what he meant to them as a father and husband. He was an easygoing person. He was always smiling, always uh, making things simple with uh, a big love, a big smile. Wife Nadia says she spent 65 years, two months and two days with Manis. She shared ministry work with him, working on church publications, conferences and radio broadcasts. But it was his simple message of hope, first shared while pastoring in a small village in Middle Egypt that perhaps inspired her and others the most. He said, I'm coming here to preach to those people, to, le to teach those people about Jesus Christ. I'm not going to live uh, academically. I'm going to reach them with my simple words 
about Jesus and the Bible words about Jesus. And since that time, he started to reach uh, the hearts of the people. His sermons would touch my mind, reach my mind and touch my heart a lot. I would see that it's true. Daughter Violet says she also appreciated her father's gift of hospitality. People were always staying in the guest room of their house, some for months at a time. And she says she'll always remember those special times spent alone with her dad. He was a friend to me, uh, that I would sit with him and talk and talk about college and different uh, circumstances I face, and he would give me his advice. I cherished and loved that time a lot. Son Farid says his father practiced what he preached. He believed it. Many people differed with him, some violently, uh, but uh, he, he just believed it and believed it quietly and confidently, and things turned his way. Pastor Sammy Maurice took over when Noor retired in 2008. He says the pastor received daily threats by mail, email, and phone. That we will kill you, we will kidnap your kids, we will rape your wives. Um, and he was not afraid. So this man defeated the spirit of fear and uh, influenced the whole church to have the same, the same courage, yes. And because of it, he led many non-believers to faith in Christ. During Noor's more than 30 years as pastor, regular attendance at Qasr al Dabara Church grew from 300 in 1976 to as many as 8,000 worshipers today. Members of his church family and those who worked with him say they'll miss the man they called Abuna, Father Manis. In 1999, Ibrahim Fauzi started working as Pastor Noor's driver. He taught me how to love people. He taught me how to be humble because Jesus was humble. He taught me to show love for others without expecting anything in return. That fruitful service is the greatest blessing every honest servant seeks after. Sharif first met Noor when he became senior pastor at Qasr El Dubara Church. At that time I was very young, but his sermons was coming to my heart very deep and very concise, so I loved him so much. Nasmi is a saxophonist in the church praise band. He describes Pastor Noor as a blessing. Father Manis always poured joy into the heart of everybody who met him. We loved him so much. Though I am sad about his passing, but he deserves to have his crown in the heaven. As it's written, I have finished the race. Baba, I love you so much. The righteous will be remembered forever. Manis Abdel Noor still speaks, even though he is no longer with us. I miss him. And as I walk now in the house and in and, and, and his study and remember things, I really feel uh, taken by emotions at moments. But, but he's not dead. He's more alive than I am. I will miss his company, his love, his words. I lift up my heart and my eyes to God. He would say, give all the glory to God. Give all the glory to Jesus. I'm a vessel of clay, but with a treasure inside. And that the treasure is Jesus Christ. Gary Lane, CBN News, Cairo, Egypt. Up next, another discovery confirms the biblical account of history. Find out which of Israel's famous kings is at the heart of this story. You can fill your days with the life-changing power of God's Word. Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. The Transforming Word, verses to overcome fear and experience peace. Available now. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. 
Eight years ago, my husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. Kids, we want them to grow up knowing God's word. But in today's busy world, sometimes we could use some help. The free Superbook Kids Bible app has fun stuff your kids will love. They'll have a blast learning the Bible, playing great games, watching cool videos, right, follow me. discovering heroes in the Bible. They'll have fun while they learn God's Word. The Superbook Kids Bible app, available on iTunes and the Google Play Store. Well, one of the most significant archaeological finds in years has been announced by Hebrew University. The discovery confirms the record of the Bible. And the life of one of uh, ancient Israel's most famous kings. Chris Mitchell brings us that story from Jerusalem. It's small, only one centimeter wide, but it's already made a big impact. It's called a bula, an ancient seal. What makes this so significant is the name on the seal. We discovered the seal impression imprinted by King Hezekiah himself, saying very clearly in ancient Hebrew, Lechizkiyahu, Ahaz, Melech Yehuda, belongs to Hezekiah, son of Ahaz, king of Judea. Hebrew University archaeologist Elat Mazar discovered the seal during one of her excavations. For Mazar, it was the discovery of a lifetime. Astonished. This, this was, <clears throat> I, I think, this was most amazed find for me personally, ever. I was kind of <laughs> amazed. Mazar and her team discovered the bula in this area. It's called the Ophel, built by King Solomon and located at the southern wall of the Temple Mount. Mazar says the discovery is unprecedented. We never found in archeological uh, excavations, scientific stratigraphy, such an item that is so close, private, tangible to any of the Israelite or Judean king ever. It's, it, I believe it's, it's as close as we can get to any biblical figure, not to mention such a figure as King Hezekiah. The Bible describes Hezekiah in 2 Kings 18.5. It says, He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor who were before him. Mazar says the bula was King Hezekiah's personal seal for important documents. She says the find validates the Bible. And I'm amazed to see repeatedly that archaeological evidence goes so beautifully along with the biblical story. It just repeatedly showing us that so much of the biblical narratives are accurate. Simply as that, accurate. The find also connects the Jewish people to ancient Israel. We're talking about, what, 2,800 years, uh, just as the Bible says, uh, we're talking about the kingdom of Judah and, Ju Judah and Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. Uh, we're talking about the history of Jerusalem in such a tangible, independent way. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, The Ophel, Jerusalem. You know, what's interesting too, George, is that little coin is in very good condition. It, is. it absolutely Amazing. Is. Well, you can find out more great stories about Israel and the work of the church around the globe. Just visit our website at cbnnews.com. We'll be right back. CBN presents The Transforming Word, a new DVD and audio CD set from Pat Robertson. I've recorded verses from the Bible which speak of fear and speak of deliverance. I want every one of you to listen carefully to these verses, and I want you to be free from fear. The Transforming Word will teach you biblical principles to overcome fear, show you how to have victory over anxiety, and discover how hearing and speaking the Scripture can bring peace to your life. 
For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Perfect love casts out fear, for fear has torment, and God does not want any of you to live in torment. The Transforming Word, Volume 2, Verses to Overcome Fear and Experience Peace. Available now. Life. It's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it. I came to give you life. Life to the fullest. Life in your family. Life in your finances. Life in your body, mind, and spirit. Life in your everyday. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. When you give, smiles grow bigger. When you care, homes are happier. When you comfort, the hurt goes away. When we all come together to love, miracles happen. And finally, today, the Christian Broadcasting Network is helping folks all around the world. Yes, including people like these seven-year-old twins in Guatemala. Without help from CBN's Operation Blessing, they would have been blind for the rest of their lives. Take a look. We see what is near. We don't see anything farther. We feel we're going blind because we have many headaches. We count 10 steps from the kitchen to the bedroom. Alba and Amelia are identical twins. Now at age seven, the twins have lost 90% of their vision. Soon they will live in complete darkness. Some days we feel like quitting school. The family tried a traditional remedy to heal their daughters. We thought we could take the curse away from the girls, rubbing a leash on their eyes. But it didn't work. Then, a simple surgery provided by Operation Blessing changed everything. Before, I could not see hardly anything. Now, I can see everything. I can see the coconuts on the top of our tree. I can see my house and all the animals passing by. I like to see the trees, the birds, the cow. Now I can see that ugly horse when my dad put us on its back. Thanks to Operation Blessing for operating my eyes. Thanks to God and a big applause to them. Thanks, Operation Blessing. God bless you. Wow, simple surgery. Those precious little girls. Beautiful. With beautiful smiles and now beautiful eyes. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Until next week, from all of us here at Christian World News, goodbye and God bless you.